Hi YouTube, it's Marita Joyce and I am back with a book review. Okay, so I, when I did my book haul, I told you guys that I would review Stephen King's On Writing and I did that. I love, love, love this book. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. I will post that down below so that you can take a look at the review that I gave. And I found Stephen King's Memoir of the Craft to be excellent. It was great as a memoir and it was also great as kind of a writing manual. Now I'm not a writer but I am a reader so I just thought that this is a really really good book and I recommend it to anybody who is a writer or who loves to read and just wants to know more about authors and how they come up with their ideas, how they put together books, things like that. Like this is really great for that. So in this book I'm going to be looking at my notes a little bit. Um, Stephen King starts out talking about his early life, his history from his childhood and he gives you an overview. He tells you everything from things about his ear infections to like embarrassing moments. And then he goes on to talk about his early reading of science fiction magazines and how that sparked his interest in writing. So I'm going to read a blurb from the book on page 51. Stephen King says one night, sick to death of class reports, cheerleading updates, and some lame brain's effort to write a school poem, I created a satiric high school newspaper of my own when I should have been captioning photographs for the drum. The box motto in the upper left hand corner was not all the news that fit to print, but all the you know what that will stick. That piece of dimwit humor got me into the only real trouble of my high school career. It also led me to the most useful writing lesson I ever got. Okay, so here he's going to start telling us about an event that happened in school. So it says, Cal Man, because of his family old Ricker Derry, Mr. Deal, the earth science teacher, became old raw deal. As all sophomoric humorists must be, I was totally blown away by my own wit. What a funny fellow I was, a regular Milltown H.L. McKinnon. I simply must take the vomit to school and show all of my friends. They would bust a collective gut. As a matter of fact, they did bust a collective gut. I had some good ideas about what tickled the funny bones of high school kids and most of them were showcased in the village vomit. In one article, Cowman's prized jersey won a livestock farting contest at Top Sham Farm. In another, Old Raw Deal was fired for sticking the eyeballs of specimen fetal pigs up his nostrils. Humor in the Graham Swiftian manner, you see. Pretty sophisticated, eh? During period four, three of my friends were laughing so hard in the back of study hall that Miss Ray Pack, Rat Pack, to you chum, crept up on them to see what was so funny. She confiscated the village vomit, on which I had, either out of overweening pride or almost unbelievable naivet, put my name as editor-in-chief and Grand High Pooba. At the close of school, I was for the second time in my student career summoned to the office on account of something I had written. This time the trouble was a good deal more serious. Most of the teachers were inclined to be good sports about my teasing. Even old raw deal was willing to let bygones be bygones concerning the pig's eyeballs. But one was not. This was Miss Mardigan who taught shorthand typing to the girls in the business course. She commanded both respect and fear. In the tradition of teachers from an earlier era, Miss Mardigan did not want to be your pal, your psychologist, or your inspiration. She was there to teach business skills, and she wanted all learning to be done by the rules. Her rules. Girls in Miss Mardigan's class were sometimes asked to kneel on the floor, and if the hem of their skirts didn't touch the linoleum, they were sent home to change. No amount of tearful begging could soften her. No reasoning could modify her view of the world. Her detention lists were as longest. Her, her detention lists were the longest of any teacher in the school, but her girls were routinely selected as valedictorians or salutatorians and usually went on to good jobs. 
Many came to love her. Others loathed her then and likely still do now, all these years later. These later girls called her Maggot Mardigan, as their mothers had no doubt before them. And in the village vomit, I had an item which began, Miss Mardigan known affectionately to Lisbonians everywhere as Maggot. Mr. Higgins, our bald principal, breezily referred to in the vomit as Old Cue Ball, told me that Miss Mardigan had been very hurt and upset by what I had written. She was apparently not too hurt to remember that old scriptural adm admonition, which goes, Vengeance is mine, said the shorthand teacher. However, Mr. Higgins said she wanted me suspended from school. In my character, a kindness of wildness, a kind of wildness and deep conservatism are wound together like hair in a braid. It was the crazy part of me that had first ridden the village vomit and then carried it to school now that troublesome Mr. Hyde had dubbed up and slunk out the back door. Dr. Jekyll was left to consider how my mom would look at me if she found out I had been suspended, her hurt eyes. I had to push I had to put thoughts of her out of my mind and fast. I was a sophomore, I was a year older than most of my other class, and at six feet two, I was one of the biggest boys in school. I, I desperately did not want to cry in Mr. Higgins' office with all of the school kids in the hall looking curiously in the window at us. Mick, Mr. Higgins behind his desk and me in the bad boy seat. If it makes any difference, my apology was heartfelt. Miss Mardigan really had been hurt by what I had wrote, and that much I could understand. I doubt that she hated me. She probably was too busy, but she was the National Honor Society advisor at LHS, and when my name showed up on the candidate list two years later, she vetoed me. The Honor Society did not need boys of his type, she said, I have come to believe she was right. A boy who once wiped his you-know-what with poison ivy probably doesn't belong in a smart people's club. So that was kind of long, but that was, I thought, my favorite, that was my favorite two pages in the book. I love the idea that Stephen King at such a young age was so ballsy. He was so brave. He was brave enough to do this paper, this newspaper. He was the editor of the, the school paper and instead of him doing what he should have been doing, he was actually making fun of his instructors in a very creative and linguistic way. So that's all being said to say that I think great writers have creative minds that sometimes they can use in the worst way. That probably wasn't the best thing to do in high school. But nonetheless, I think Stephen King at a very young age showed a propensity for um, w having a feeling of <laughs> wanting to do something and then just having to get it out. He just had to get that out of him. He had to. And I think that's what we have grown to love about Stephen King. He's brave, he's honest, and in this book he talks about being honest in your writing. Um, and I mean, I, I, that definitely got him in trouble in high school, but that's one of the things that I really love about this book. It's very honest. Um, Stephen King also talks about what's good writing. What is good writing? He says that first, Good writing consists of mastering the fundamentals, vocabulary, grammar, and the elements of style. Um, I thought that was really important. He also speaks about some of, other, some of the other great writers in history, Shakespeare, Faulkner, Yeats, Shaw, Edora. The, um, it, was, it, was, it was really, really good. As far as finding books within a book, this is it. This is the book to find the great books. He talks about Charles Dickens and Raymond Chandler. Um, the book is just great. One of the quotes that interested me, it says, and this was epic. If you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others. Read a lot and write a lot. 
And I truly believe that. I think if you really want to be good at almost anything, you need to read a lot. Now, I don't know about the writing part because I'm not a writer, but I think that reading opens up the world in ways that almost nothing else can because um, I, I meant, like I said, I named my channel um, Marita Joyce Reads Minds, but books open you up to some of the greatest minds in the world and it opens you up to a compilation of information um, that you may not be able to get because you can't access these people. You may not be able to access these people, but you could all you could always access what's in their head because it's somewhere in a book. So I love, I love, love, love that about this book. I love that about this book. Um, another thing that Stephen King talked about in the book is if you don't have time to read, you don't have time to write. There you go. That's for you writers out there. He talks about how to keep the reader interested. Um he goes in, de in great detail and he uses his book Misery as an example of how to keep the reader interested. I never read M Misery. In fact, I'll be honest with you, this is the only Stephen King book that I've ever read. But I fell in love with this book and I probably will go on to read his other books. I've watched lots and lots of his movies. I have a brother who's a horror movie fanatic and as a child... To my dismay, I watched a lot of horror movies, and a lot of them were uh, Stephen King uh, books that were turned movies, so I'm really interested. Caffeine is a writer's best friend. I am going to have to agree with that. I love caffeine, and I always think it makes me a better writer once I've had like two, three cups of tea or coffee. Um, create interesting sit situations. So... Stephen King says that writers should create interesting situations. And how do you go about doing that? He says, always ask, what if? What if this? What if that? Like that creates interesting situations. So Stephen King goes on to talk about how to write great descriptions. And he talks, he talks extensively in this book about using the senses to create great descriptions. He talks about where to write. He talks about writing with the door closed, which is when you go into a room and you're just all alone and you just spend hours in what Cal Newport calls, what is it, deep work? And I think that's what Stephen King is kind of alluding to in this book is when you close the door, he talks about closing the door and writing and just getting into a flow. So that's kind of, I think, uh, related to that. He talks about narration and how to do great narration. He talks about compact language. Now, this one for me is something I really need to look into because my papers tend to be long and outdrawn. I'm long winded. I want to write. I want to give you all the details. And sometimes it's just too much. Um... And he talks in the book about compact languages and he says if you really want to learn the ability to write great, crisp, compact language, read T.S. Eliot. Dialogue. He says dialogue equals audio, which equals character voice. So that's how you come about giving your characters voices in the book. Dialogue equals audio equals characters voice. Stephen King talks about building characters. Stephen King talks about practice. Practice, practice, practice. This is what he says on practice. On page 195 of Unwriting, Stephen King says, We've covered some basic aspects of good storytelling, all of which return to the same core ideas, that practice is invaluable and should feel good, really not like practice at all, and honestly is indispensable. So, yes, so I guess to be great at anything, you need to spend many, many hours in practice. How to find an agent, he talks about submitting your work. He walks us through revising a book. That I thought was kind of awesome and he is detailed in it. He gives very, very good advice about how to, re how to revise a book. And I had an English teacher in high school that taught us to write and then leave your writing for days. And Stephen King talks about writing a book and I think he says, how long to let the first draft rest? He says six weeks, six weeks of allowing the first draft to rest. And when you come back to writing after you've left it or hid it and not looked at it for a period of time, you can see all of your mistakes. He was so on point on this. And it made me think about my high school teacher. And I thought about all the things that she taught us about writing. And I was like, wow, you know, like she had given us that advice 
and here Stephen King was repeating that so I was like good stuff um he talks about a formula which I thought was really interesting and that formula is the second draft equals the first draft minus 10 percent and he says this is the way you squeeze out all of the bad stuff in your writing and you get only the pulp only the good stuff um and he he talks about using that formula to get rid of extraneous information that is not needed and that's how you get a good crisp piece of work um and he says that he does that before sending his stuff off to um publishers or whatever whoever he's submitting his work to so in the last part of the book he just says good luck and he says read a lot write a lot and so i love this book those are some of the things the points that i really loved in this book and that kind of captured me this is going to forever be on my shelf as a reference and also as a guidebook Stephen King also goes on to list a book list and if you're anything like me I'm probably more obsessed with book lists than I am actually reading and he lists all the books that he reads and I just thought that was fabulous and I love that this this is one of my all-time favorite reference manuals for writing and he actually made me feel like I could just sit down and actually write something like that was pretty cool so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please 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 if you had not read Stephen King's on writing you need to get this book if you are an aspiring writer or if you just love reading or you're a Stephen King fanatic and you've never read this book go out get it it's lovely guys thank you and I'll see you guys on the next video bye